Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We are gonna trash talk some products that didn't work out for me. I have a bunch of them that were super disappointing and I always like to add first before diving in to these more sensitive, controversial videos that if I mention something that you love, please keep loving and using it. We all have different desires from products and I know sometimes I can go a little hard with my opinions. That's the whole vibe of this video. So if you're into it, then kick back, relax and let's talk about what I've recently tried, purchased myself, that I regret buying. Cheers. I'm caffeinated too, and I'm having kind of one of those days where you just feel like, ugh, like I just kind of feel good in a way about venting about things. And no, I'm not PM messy. It's just like an average Monday and life has been a little bit chaotic recently. And maybe I am kind of taking it out on my products, but it is what it is. I'm in a mood, I'm yerba mate up, and we're just gonna go there. I do have a couple of things that I will say I wanna shout out that are good things too, just for balance sake, because that's the kind of woman that I am. I always try to like give a little love somewhere. Let's start off with this powder right here that ruined a perfect day of makeup, turning me into what I felt was more of like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz than Glowing Radiance. This is a newer launch from Makeup Forever. This is a powder that has three different kind of color correcting, diffusing elements to it. You do this little thing in here and it gives you a blend of the powders, kind of a take on the Givenchy, how there are four different finishes, four different tones. This is just, it's super weird how it goes on the skin so actually silver shimmery. And it's not just light diffusing, you actually feel like you're getting some pigmentation there and that's what surprised me. I was super excited to try it. I brought it home, I did my makeup as usual, and then to set all the makeup and give that like final kiss, I went in with a big fluffy brush as I would if I were using an ambient powder or like the Guerlain Pearls. It's kind of like, I thought it would be the same type of a deal went in and I kid you not, it destroyed my makeup. Just in one fail, just like it just, just tin man, silver, specks of mica glitter all over the face, blotchy, pores and lines exaggerated, everything I don't want from a powder. So this was an absolute no from the jump. I tried it one time, that was enough for me and it's a pass. The HD Skin Twist and Light, this is in the shade One Light. Maybe the other shades are better. You guys let me know. Have you tried this? Did you like it? I just did not. I have enough finishing powders that work much better. Okay, another powder that sadly did not work out for me. Now, I love this brand so much, Say. They make a beautiful cream bronzer. And I was really hoping that this Air Set Radiant Loose Setting Powder would do the trick. It's like the same kind of a thing where it's actually like too shimmery and simultaneously coveragey. I just don't like it. I want one or the other. You can see right here, there's a decent amount of pigmentation in terms of coverage. And there's also a lot of luminosity. Now, if I go into the Guerlain, I don't know how I'm gonna do this because it's like not a loose powder. And I wipe it on the other part of my skin, it just gives this nice glossy glow. It gives kind of this diffused overlay type of a thing. The Say powder is similar to the new one from Makeup Forever where it's just too much of both. And I think that I would rather be super high maintenance and have one and the other, like do a Huda Beauty, kind of full coverage under the eye and then have that glistening finishing setting powder for everywhere else. Otherwise, it just exaggerates everything in my opinion in kind of this crazy way where you look shiny and patchy and it's just not a good look. So that was another powder that I just, I'm not a fan of. Um, my powder drawer, by the way, it's that one right there. Like my eyes are on you. I need to clear that one out. There's so much powder in that drawer that I cannot even open it. Like I constantly have to put my hand in and kind of like pat everything down. And I'm like, 
Yo, we have an issue collecting too much powder and thinking that I need it all. I don't. I have very specific needs and wants and desires from a good loose powder and pressed powder, and I should probably do a declutter. I think it might be a boring video, but you guys let me know. Are you into that? Do you want to see that drawer? That is a nightmare. Um, maybe we bring back a little bit of the graveyard series that I did so many moons ago. Okay. Getting away from powder and talking about primer. I purchased this at Ulta and I had a lot of high hope for it. I tested it on the back of my hand. I was all about it. I'm seeing this big display. And when I used this for the first time doing my makeup routine, nothing worked. Like it was the only new item that I put in the mix. And I was like, no, like, why is this making the makeup pill? Why is everything looking kind of putty and like gummy and just not good? So I used it once. I didn't like it. I used it again with lighter makeup on top, like not my normal go-to stuff. And it still just did not do the trick. This is from Tula. I'm exploring the brand right now. I like their oil cleanser right now. I do really love that. But this is one of those that color corrects, like it comes out looking a little gray and then you put it on and it matches the skin. I don't know why I purchased these and think that they will work for me. They almost never ever work. And then they make the skin look blotchy and weird. And this has this weird oil slick overlay that just gummifies the skin. I can't put it better than that. I wanted to love it. The Tula Filter Primer. It's said to be blurring as well, but it's very shiny and it does not blur much at all. Okay, we got two more primers. We got one that used to be the gold standard and I feel bad getting rid of this. I feel like, oh my gosh, like maybe I can, like I can figure out a way to make it work because I used to swear by this. Like this would be like if me from the future all of a sudden put this in a fails video, can you even imagine? Like that's kind of how I feel. So the poor professional from Benefit. Now this used to be the one that we would all use and love and recommend to get rid of our pores. My issue with this one, this pills quite a bit. It does not smooth out the way that the Tarte primer does or the way that even the Wet n Wild Silicone Free does. It just kind of gets a little too powdery and then has a tendency to not agree with a lot of makeup. So I am parting ways with this one and I won't be purchasing it again. And it's the end of an era for me because once upon a time, this was like as good as it got. Like this was it. If you wanted to smooth things out, like this is what you wanted. Times have changed. All right, the drugstore has done a lot in terms of primers and what they are able to accomplish. I really wanted to like this one. It has uh, alpha hydroxy and BHA and it's a pore minimizer. And I love the infallible range from L'Oreal. You guys know, I swear by that line. This just did not do enough. It's a little bit slick going on for a pore blurring primer and it just, again, leaves kind of a filmy texture on top of the skin instead of sinking in and really canceling out those pores and lines. So this was just not it for me. I did a mini cleanup of a bunch of primers recently and this went in the junk drawer. So it is a pass. I feel like my hair is like swallowing up my face at the moment, getting my hair redone. Um, pretty soon here. Do I keep it blonde? Do I go dark? That is the dilemma in my mind at the moment. All right, I have another Benefit product, sadly. Um, I am re visiting a bunch of their makeup at the moment. Hula Bronzer still has my heart. Their blushes have my heart. Their setting spray is amazing. This new Fan Fest mascara that I tried on in a recent video worked really, really well as far as volume and lift. I like it. I like the brush. I like the application. Oh my gosh, it started irritating my eyes so bad and it was really, really difficult to take off even with an oil cleanser. So I'm not inclined to wear it again. This one was a pass. I have never spoken about this brand on my channel and I, yai, 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 I feel like people are gonna be angry with me. Like it's one of those where it's like, no, we love it. How dare you? Um, but I'm gonna go there anyway, just because this peptide lip treatment from Rode, 
smells so weird. I was expecting it to not have this like perfumey flavor, but it wasn't even the texture of it. It was the fact that everything I ate for hours, even after I wiped it off, had this like perfumey weird taste to it. And I was just like, ugh, like I cannot. Do you guys enjoy this lip balm? I am a snob. When it comes to lip treatments, you guys know I love Laneige. You know, I'm into the Tony Moly, which I have right here. I actually super love Clarins has a newer, it almost smells like cotton candy waffle cone, like a lip treatment that I always keep in my purse. I love a good balm. I'm all about it. I get it. I understand them. I feel like I have a pretty good taste, no pun intended, like not literal taste. Um, I have a pretty good judge of what a good lip balm is because I love trying everything. And this one just did not do enough. Outside of it tasting weird, I just feel like it did not zhuzh up the lips and hydrate enough. I am not a fan. And I know that's not a popular opinion. A lot of people like that one not me. All right, let's talk about foundation that did not work out, the Dermablend CC Cream. This is the Continuous Correction Full Coverage CC Cream. The sunscreen in here is bananas, all right? You can smell it upon contact. It's so aggressive. It just like smacks you in the face. I was thinking it might be a nice idea. It's a high coverage CC cream. I love CC creams. I always want them to work out for me and then they make me break out. I don't know why I keep going back to the well. I just do um, because I love trying new things, but this one was terrible. It also says that it will wear up to 24 hours. It does not. It blotched on me. It looked good immediately, but then then about halfway through the day, I was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. And literally for hours, all I could smell was the sunscreen. Like it is so potent. Woof. I just, I can't, I can't. I personally really like not having sunscreen in foundation because I think that you need a sunscreen outside of your sunscreen and foundation. And then also if you're doing your makeup at night, you don't want sunscreen in the foundation. It will give you potential flashback. All right, this is another foundation I recently put to the test from Maybelline. This is a up to 30 hour foundation. I wanna say I tested this out for a dupes video and it's pretty good. I just don't love it more than a lot of my other classic foundations from the drugstore that I obsess over. So I am still into the infallible long wear. It's what I'm wearing today. I can always count on this foundation to look good and make my skin look fresh and nice, no matter what shape my skin is in. Right now, I feel like my skin looks like garbage without makeup on. It is dehydrated. I am breaking out. I'm having like hormonal breakout from I think traveling and stress. And I was sitting here in the mirror and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like I feel like I have earned being at the place in life where I should only have to deal with one or the other, acne or lines. Like dealing with them both is a whole mess. Like if you know, you know, it's just like, you gotta be kidding me. I don't know whether to use like the acne treatment or like, oh my gosh, is like my anti-aging cream gonna make the breakout worse? Like it's like this tug of war. So if you find yourself in that skin situation, I feel you. My advice and what I'm doing is just simplifying and going with the products that I know and trust to work well and not doing anything too aggressive and just letting my body kind of process out what it needs to process out and drinking lots of water and resting and kind of balancing my system because I think it's more hormonal than anything. But anyway, long story short, whenever my skin is like, ugh, like it's, it's acting up in that way where it's like it's every which direction. This foundation always saves the day. It doesn't make me break out. It has such a nice finish. It hydrates, but it doesn't add like a ton of grease or oil. It just balances the skin and gives enough coverage in the areas that I want that coverage. And this is the kind of formula that I would say is similar. It's a long wear formula. It has a similar consistency, but if I had to pick between these two, I'd always go with the L'Oreal. This one, just at the end of the day, makes my pores look visible and it does separate enough that it makes the skin look a little bit patchy. This one never does. I would really like a refund on this, but I am not in the game of going to Nordstrom and returning makeup. I feel really bad about it. I feel like this is just something with my job that I have to kind of just 
eat. Like I just have to eat that cost of reviewing products and it is what it is. And I don't know, I just find it kind of cringe. Like I always meet amazing people at counters and they're so helpful and I buy product, I buy a lot of product. And the last thing I wanna do is go back and be like, guess what? This did not work, you know? So you guys always wonder what I do with this stuff. I just eat the cost. It's just, I just do. This is from Trish McAvoy. I haven't tried much of her stuff recently. I was looking for a more high-end cream bronzer. I kind of wanted to compare and I'm really into doing dupes videos right now. So I wanted to compare different levels like the high, high ticket to drugstore to in between. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be amazing. Like this is gonna be my new best friend. Look at me, I am a fancy woman. And honestly, this pills to high heaven does not blend and is just tragically overpriced. My favorite, I would say, that's kind of mid-tier is, look how much I have destroyed this. Are you kidding me? This is true love right here. When you get messy like this, then mwah, you know that is like, this is the one. Um, this is one of the contour items, cream contour items, bronzers. I don't know the name of it from Danessa Myricks. The circular ones are also, ugh, let's just pull it out, hold on. Da, 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 da. Ooh, she's organized. I got the right drawer. Okay. Also, true love. Do we see when they're banged up and beaten up and you're seeing pan, like you know brushes have just earned, like these are in the almost everyday rotation. So I would say middle of the road, Danessa Myricks. These are not a hundred bucks a piece, but they're definitely not $5 drugstore. This was gonna be my like top tier, trying it, amazing. No, you're so waxy, blotchy, and just unpredictable. Also, I am pretty sure this is the only shade that they have for their cream bron bronzer. Oh my gosh, what? Let's drink some more caffeine and make a bad situation worse. Um, okay, I think this is the only shade, which I thought was super strange. Just saying. Okay. If you're wondering about good things on my face, I'm gonna tell you really quickly because I feel like we have trash talked quite a bit. My eyes today are Clio. This is the Pro Eye Palette 12 Autumn Breeze. I love this palette so much. This is available on Amazon. I will link it below along with my Tony Moly. Love it so much. Danessa Myricks just has me. Like I love her products. Um, yes, I am finally on PR, but this is not a sponsored thing at all. I just love her products so, so much. So I use that palette in my brows and a little on the face. And Sigma has new lip creams that I am loving so much jojoba oil, vitamin E, really beautiful colors. I tried all of these on, and usually when I get a collection sent to me, like the full range, like here's five new lip colors, there are a couple of colors that I'm just like, oh gosh, like no. This, very wearable, really flattering, and I can see most people having a good time with them. On my nails, I'm wearing Sin Eater which is an interesting name. You guys know Mooncat always has the weirdest names for their polishes, but like, yo, is that not so pretty? Like stop this right now. I honestly cannot stop staring at my nails. I probably look like a psycho in public right now. Like literally I'll be at the grocery store and I'll just like look at my own nails. And if anybody walks by and they see me, cause like it shifts in the light and changes <laughs> depending on the light. So I just kind of look hypnotized by my own hands and it's like a whole moment that I am having, but I'm loving this shade for fall. Mwah, it's so good, I love it. Also my sweater is Lily Silk and you can't see the bra that I'm wearing underneath, but well now you can. Also Lily Silk, probably the most comfortable no wire bra ever created. I'm obsessed with it. You can use the code TATI15 to save 15% off. No, this is not sponsored. I just, they sent me clothes that I love, so I'm going to keep wearing them and I'll let you know when I do. Um, but how cute is this? Okay, so now we are back to the dish. Let's talk a little Laura Mercier. I love Laura Mercier. 
Love the powder. Foundations are fabulous. Love a lot of her lip products. This one, a lot of people loved. I didn't. So it's going to fall in that category of if your skin is the right kind of skin that will agree with this product, maybe you'll really love it. But for me, it just did not work. This is the new Tinted Moisturizer Bronzer. Now, the funny thing is I do not like Laura Mercier Tinted Foundation. My sister Sabrina swears by it. It's like her favorite. It's like her ride or die. I always look at her skin and I'm like, wow, you look amazing, like so fresh. It looks so nice. Like, what are you wearing? And she'll tell me what it is. And I have done this like twice now where I will go and buy it because I'm like, wow, your skin looks so good. And I put it on and it just looks like a greasy mess on me. And I'm like, why? Like, this is so weird. So that's an example of how products really can perform differently for us all. If you wanna know my skin type, it is um, a little bit textured right here. That's why I love that pore smoothing primer so much. Just from back in the day, I had cystic acne, I have deep oil glands. Um, my pores, I feel like could be smaller in my mind. I'm always battling that. And I get dehydrated pretty easily. Like the surface of my skin can get dehydrated. So it's like true blue combo skin that I'm dealing with, which is why you hear me often say things like, this is not sinking in, the skin is a little bit gummy. Like that's what I mean when I say that. And I also don't like products that have too much luminosity when you're going into sculpt or bronze because of my face shape. I feel like I don't want anything exaggerating shadows that are just naturally there and like adding to them in a negative way. So I do have kind of a high level of pickiness when it comes to picking out bronzers, contours specifically. This one right here, just the dry down in my opinion is a little uneven, a little bit blotchy, a little bit shiny. And then like you don't have much time to really blend it. It is long wearing, but if you don't get things set right away, you're gonna be in danger. You're gonna be in trouble with it. I just had a hard time blending this one out the few times that I reached for it, so it's a pass. And then the face hack, this is from Freck. Now this is a product that James was like, you should try this, this is cool. And I was shopping in Sephora, taking probably way too much time. And he was like seated in the center of the Sephora we were at. And this was like on an end cap. And it was really cute because sometimes he'll point out things that I've missed. He's like, this looks cool. Um, Yeah, don't tell James, this was such a dud. This did not work at all. It literally gives you like not a lot of pigmentation and it's very balmy and waxy, like chapstick waxy. I just don't get these. I thought I would understand the shape maybe for the nose or maybe it's you know gonna help you to actually contour a little bit better, but I just, I don't get it. I don't like it. Um, okay, I'm still on the hunt for like the perfect deodorant that is natural, aluminum free, has good ingredients. And this is the Agent Natur Unisex Number Zero Deodorant. Um, this is it's so fancy, right? I got this at Blue Mercury. I just, ooh, grandpa. This smells like my grandpa. I'm not even joking. Like this smells like the cologne he wore. It's all I can think of. And so maybe this is more of a personal me issue, but it smells like a car air freshener. I don't think I had the opportunity to smell this in the store. I think it was shut and there wasn't like a tester or anything, but I had read so many reviews online being like, this is luxury, it's so good, it's the best. And I took it home and I was so excited. And then immediately wasn't. I was like, oh my gosh, we are in a forest. It is musky, a little elderly, dare I say. But you know what I'm saying? Like people get really mad at me. They're like, don't say that. That Don't say that Cody Airspun smells like grandma. And I'm like, the reason it smells like grandma to me is because that is like a first memory that I have of what grandma's face powder smelled like. I don't know, do you know what I mean? Like there's like an era type scent and like, I'm not meaning to be rude. That's just where it takes me. So you have been warned if you see this online and everybody's like flipping out about it, just know it's incredibly pine needle musky. Does it actually make you not smell like BO? Sure, but I, I don't know, I just need to find something better. Okay, moving along. I have from Makeup Revolution, something that I thought was going to be a dupe for the Bobbi Brown. I think it's the Miracle Balm. And these are just an absolute freaking nightmare to put on the skin. If you want to destroy your makeup, like be my guest. Majority of what this is, is just 
Vaseline. And then it just exaggerates everything. And even if you put it on like a fresh face with no powder because you have perfect skin and like it doesn't even matter anyway, it's just gonna make you look like you left the gym or a sauna and like not in a, oh, did you get a facial? Like you're super healthy. Like, no, it just looks like you just like wiped oil on your face. There's just nothing really redeeming about this product. So I don't get it. Has anyone else tried this? Like literally I got a couple shades and I'm just gonna donate this because, which I even feel kind of bad about, but like, what do I do? I feel even worse just throwing it in the bin, but like, this is terrible. It says you can apply it to the lips too, but like, I just did not like this. It was a hard pass from me. Okay, we're gonna land on the weirdest high note ever. I have a new product that I just purchased pretty recently and I'm in love with it. Simultaneously, I also freaking hate it. Okay, so are you ready for the finale? We're gonna talk about the Skin Drink Body Firmer Intense Renewal Lotion for all skin types. This has neroli oil, CoQ10. Uh, this has DMAE, alpha lipoic acid, C ester. It has a ton of organic botanicals. Now this says, like it doesn't say fragrance free, but there's no added fragrance in here. And I don't know how that's even possible because I'm in a tropical rainforest. It is mango and mist scented. It smells really, really good, but it is potent. I was not expecting that. I got out of the shower. I loaded myself up. I love having soft skin. It's something I am after. I love a good firming cream. This has all of the goods in it that I want, but the scent is so intense that you wake up in the morning and like my hands still smelt like this lotion after going to bed and waking up the next day. I think I'm gonna keep using it, maybe not overdoing it like I did um, initially because I really love the ingredients and it does make your skin so, so soft. And it has almost this like mango scent, but there's no mango in it. It's just kind of throwing me back to like Garden Botanica. <laughs> If anyone remembers Garden Botanica, it kind of has that mango scent. Gosh, I miss Garden Botanica. Um, So yeah, this was like the weirdest, newest, coolest thing ever that is working, but is like, whoo, sending me to the moon with all the scent. Um, if you have a recommendation for anything that's like similar ingredient wise, that is not gonna knock me on my butt from fragrance, let me know. But if fragrance doesn't bother you, then check this one out. I'm sure Amazon sells it. I got it at my grocery store. I have one of the best grocery stores here in Texas that has like this beautiful like skincare and body care section and it's called Central Market, if you know, you know. So I got that one there. I think that's where I'm gonna end it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A lot of products that did not work, a few that I just had to squeeze in that I've been using on the regular that get a big thumbs up from me. If you love these videos and you want more of them, you know what to do, thumbs this up, leave a comment, Comment, share the video make sure you are subscribed and ring that bell before you leave i love you guys so much i hope you're having a great day whatever you are doing go have a good one and i will see you guys in my next video Mwah.